Hello and welcome to this week's Battle of the Ports, where we are taking a look at Probe Software's Outrun Europa. The game was published by US Gold, so yeah, two turns associated with this one, but let's give it a chance. Let's start off with the synopsis. The player suddenly has his car stolen by someone, so he steals someone's motorcycle to pursue his car. Uh, okay, not exactly award winning, but since when the games need the story. As you've no doubt guessed, the levels in our in Europa are set across Europe, taking you from the UK to France, Spain and so on. The player must escape from the police using a variety of vehicles, from the standard sports car, from Ferrari and Porsche, to motorbikes and jet skis. The problem with this is that the controls suck and with most racing games on home computers, pushing up while having to turn left and right does not make for precise controls. And yes, I am using an old school joystick too. To be fair, the car areas aren't too bad but I do find it funny that when you crash into a car it sounds like someone kicking a football. The jet ski and boat stages are a total nightmare. The stage design is bloody awful with crap all over the place. Take out the water stages and this would be an average game. Not something you would want to buy, but worth a play. God only knows how they got the Outrun license. Next is the Atari ST version, which looks pretty much the same as the Amiga graphically, but moves at a much more sluggish rate, or at least it feels that way. Just like the Amiga, Matt Furness has provided some good tunes, but sadly, again, just like the Amiga, it's either tunes or sound effects, not both. We also get a choice of controls being mouse or joystick. As to be expected, joystick is horrible, so I'm trying with the mouse this time. Anyone familiar with the Commodore 64 will know how poor most racing games are on it. Well, it comes as a great surprise that Outrun Europa is not bad at all. It moves at a good pace for the C64 racer and is definitely using sprite scrolling for the main vehicle as it moves so nicely. It makes the Amiga and ST look rather choppy. We even get music and sound effects at the same time.
that it's spectrum time and it's a bad time. Can you believe your Sinclair awarded this tripe 83%? I mean, your Sinclair was always full of crap, but come on, they need to hide their payoffs from US Gold better than this. The game looks terrible. The cars look more like some mangled mess. The controls are laughably poor due to having no physics at all, and the sound is awful. Have you ever wondered what the ZX Spectrum version would look like if it was coloured? Well here you go. Besides looking much prettier, this Amstrad CPC version is just the same as the Speccy. Have you ever wondered what the Amstrad CPC version would look like with a bit more grunt? Well here you have it. The Master System port is basically a beefed up Amstrad CPC port. It still even has the stupid push up to drive controls. Thankfully the handling has been improved somewhat and we now have extended tracks. Although I do wish they were shorter. You may be wondering why everything looks so choppy. Well that's because instead of using sprites, this game is using background tiles for everything. The upside to this is no flicker, but the downside is everything moves in a grid like fashion. Final port is the Game Gear version, but as to be expected from Probe and US Gold, this is nothing more than the Master System code running on the Game Gear. It's 100% identical. And let's take a look at all those versions of Outrun Europa running side by side. 